Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar of Planning and Budgeting Solution, where we uh, will see how uh, we can abandon the spreadsheet uh, based budgeting and uh, you know switch to an easy and more comprehensive budgeting solution. Um, my name is Umar, and I'm a senior consultant at Evosis. Uh, in this uh, webcast, the, yep. so in this webcast, uh, we will discuss the key areas of budgeting, uh, the challenges that we face when budgeting through uh, spreadsheets and uh, how uh, you know budgeting solution offered by Evosis overcomes those challenges and adds on value to the organization. We'll also discuss uh, the key features of our uh, solution followed by uh, the demonstration of the system. But uh, before we deep dive into our budgeting solution, let's uh, talk about where we stand uh, when it comes to you know, the use of technology in our business. So we often uh, discuss with uh, the top management like CEOs or CFOs uh, about the expectations in terms of the use of technology in, the, in their businesses. And uh, they want obviously the latest technology to drive the business with the use of AI and machine learning, which would literally allow them to retrieve any piece of information on their fingertips. Uh, and that includes the budgeting information. Now, however, the reality is that we are still dependent on spreadsheet as a core budgeting and uh, reporting tool, which is nowhere close to the management's uh, expectations. Uh, and majority of organizations are using spreadsheet as their primary budgeting tool. So uh, let us see uh, how effective this uh, spreadsheet based budgeting or manual budgeting is. So now um, when it comes to manual budgeting, it is often uh, time consuming based on our implementation experiences and the discussion with various budgeting teams. Uh, it takes like four to five months for a budgeting cycle to complete as it involves you know a lot of iterations back and forth communication proposed budget acceptance rejection then final you know a budget approval kind of thing and this uh, exercise utilizes good like 20 to 30 percent of the manager's time so however the duration of the cycle uh, though uh, depends on the size and complexity of the budgeting processes and all so when we equate this with uh, the dollar value uh, it will uh, on an average uh, cost approximately uh, $50,000. So uh, after all this, let's say, you know, time consuming budgeting cycle, we only have a very high level of budget values. I mean, we don't have many options to literally drill, drill through uh, in details of these numbers. So in a way, uh, we most of the time is uh, spent in preparing uh, the budget rather than actually anal analyzing those numbers. So, uh, Apart from these, there are multiple challenges. Apart from being less effective, there are multiple challenges that we face when we are doing the you know, spreadsheet-based budgeting. Uh, when we are budgeting with spreadsheets, there are multiple docs or uh, workbooks which are roaming around uh, the organizations. Each department has its own set of worksheets and you know, even the communication takes place over separate emails for security reasons. Kind. Uh, and as a result, there are multiple set of you know, workbooks to maintain. And as far as control is concerned, you know, uh, different departments have a different internal process before they submit the proposed number. So central budgeting team may not have, uh, or it ha will have a limited control over how, you know, the budgeting exercise takes place uh, within the department. Um, as far as the accuracy is concerned, uh, the spreadsheet budgeting is always prone to data manipulation because once that data flows in from your source system and lands up in spreadsheet, it is uh, open uh, to modification whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, uh, which kind of compromises the overall you know, budget accuracy and efficiency. Um, so budgeting uh, is a separate task, budgeting through these uh, spreadsheet, uh, while preparing the report out of these uh, you know, spreadsheets is different ball game altogether, because uh, we cannot uh, take these spreadsheets to the management and management obviously sometimes needs to uh, drill down uh, to the details of these reports. They want the summarize report uh, with the option of drilling through. So now preparing again uh, as per the required format by pulling in data from these, you know, interdependent spreadsheet is kind of critical. It may result in, you know, reporting wrong numbers kind of thing. Uh, also, uh, you know, there might be a different set of reports for different departments or locations. So again, we have to prepare a separate talk for that. Uh, uh, most of the time, the spreadsheet, uh, when we are doing budgeting on spreadsheet, 
they are worked upon in local machines so in case there are interdependency among departments so uh, that doesn't happen and it uh, unnecessarily delays the uh, you know budget submission due to lack of collaboration uh, also uh, spreadsheets require manual intervention uh, manual intervention so uh, it is always uh, uh, there are no seeded calculations or logics written for spreadsheets um, in case you have uh, you know statutory requirements then you again you have to separately deal with it you have to prepare a separate set of it to take uh, the effect of those uh, uh, statutory requirements and have a separate set of reporting um, and all these uh, you know flaws they make the whole budgeting cycle the whole budgeting process um, lengthy and cumbersome on the other hand uh, the budgeting solution that we are offering or uh, offered by evosis provides the right balance between time cost and management so it can be a go-to solution for um, you know dynamically changing environment where budgeting requirements um, change very frequently so uh, let us look at you know uh, how overall structure of uh, our budgeting solution looks like so as we know that the budgeting is uh, you know the projection uh, of the numbers of on future years we need to have some base data to calculate the, these budgeted numbers and we can what uh, can be better than you know the actual data in our transaction system so we can integrate the integration part we can integrate the erp uh, data warehouse or even the files with the pl uh, planning solution uh, which comes in uh, through uh, the use of uh, the epm tool and uh, once we have the actual data flowing in our budgeting solution we can carry out budgeting there are multiple uh, budgeting models like revenue workforce capital expenditure and whatnot which can be utilized within the single application also the application is quite uh, secured so uh, with uh, you know the provision matrix uh, across uh, various uh, segments of uh, budgeting whether you know department location so even uh, it it eliminates the possibility of unauthorized access even the authorized user will have the provision to their specific department also uh, as uh, the output we have the budgeting um, of this budgeting solution we have dynamic reports and dashboards that provides the real-time data that's the best feature you have the real-time data on your system on your tablets on your smartphones and we also push back this data to your source system uh, for the purpose of let's say budgetary control so uh, the budgeting solution apart from the structure has uh, the following key features it allows the easy integration from the multiple source systems uh, which again can be automated so uh, we have the option of automating this data load uh, on a let's say specific day of the week or the quarter so it just loads the data automatically and gives you a confirmation on your email or over a text message um, then there are multiple approaches to choose from whether you know you know that uh, when we are doing budgeting we may uh, use any approach like driver based increment and zero based budgeting so we can um, change approach or opt, uh, opt for like a hybrid approach uh, for the purpose of budgeting it's on our discretion and uh, since there is uh, actual data uh, uh, flowing in uh, in our system uh, so uh, it allows us uh, you know uh, variance analysis uh, in terms of uh, approval flow we might follow like the top or down or bottom up approach we have for both the options to choose from also uh, we can have you know a mix of approaches like top down bottom up approach so it provides better communication and control uh, finally one of the most important feature where our uh, dynamic reports uh, and dashboards are available with uh, real time data so these reports have options um, to drill through or you know we can use the same set of reports across multiple locations or departments so that is uh, those features we will look into in details when we are going through the solution um, as far as the process flow is concerned how the overall process takes place we can start by you know loading or verifying the actual data which again can be automated uh, so first we will uh, review uh, the actual data uh, loaded in the solution we then select the component that we want to budget like revenue opex manpower whatever component that we want to budget then we can carry out the budgeting for that component using the required approach 
again that can be zero based driver based uh, which is quite flexible um, once we are done with let's say the proposed budget we can uh, submit the same to the approver now approver on receiving uh, the proposed budget can do the you know uh, variance analysis and uh, can compare multiple version and finally approves or you know uh, reject uh, the budget numbers so this is how uh, the you know solution uh, takes place let's uh, jump directly to uh, the solution and let's see how the solution looks like so while Umar is logging in, I'd like to remind everyone, if you do have any questions, use your question icon on your toolbar, and we'll, we'll probably save them towards the end so we don't interrupt his demonstration, but um, we appreciate your, your attention. Thanks, Umar. Thank you. So um, I've just logged into the application to the solution. Uh, so this is what the homepage of the budgeting application looks like. Uh, we have the screen which uh, looks similar to that of a uh, phone screen with all the icons representing a specific uh, component of uh, the application since um, i've logged in as an admin user i see all the options but uh, this can be limited to the user and uh, the user will view only those options that he or she has provisioned for now uh, outside the system what happens is when we uh, the management you know starts budgeting they send in email to all the budget uh, owners announcing uh, the initiation of uh, the budgeting uh, and you know inviting the uh, proposed budget with the respective budget owners they may also share the budgeting template let's say so it's possible that the management may uh, miss some budget owners or you know the templates attached are not updated kind of thing but in the system when we uh, initiate the budgeting cycle it announces over here if you see your announcement board uh, over here it uh, announces on your home screen that uh, the budgeting is cycle also it uh, you know shoots an email notification to all the business uh, owners with the link uh, to the application using uh, that link um, you know we can directly navigate to the home screen of the application uh, with the use of uh, single sign on so that uh, feature is also here uh, so uh, once so here you can see uh, the um, announcement that is made by the budgeting team so once uh, you know the user start uh, using the solution initially uh, he may not be familiar with the navigations or the screens or for what uh, i mean for that we have uh, you know simplified uh, the use by providing a task list so the user just had to literally navigate to this uh, task list and the uh, entire budgeting process is um, broken down into similar tasks or very you know for simple understanding and uh over here like uh, if you want to review the actual data load you can directly navigate yourself from this application obviously these task lists are again uh provisioned or they will be uh, based on the user who's using it only those tasks will be available for the user so uh, you can navigate directly to the form like on here i can review the actual data just by going through uh, those steps that are specified for me being a user things like that uh, it really help users initially when uh, they are you know navigating through the application also all these tasks if you see we can assign a date a start and end date to those tasks so whenever those are uh, scheduled those tasks uh, they uh, again uh, are synced with our um, uh, calendar and they update us give us a notification that a particular task is due on that date also we can have the instructions so uh, this uh, uh, really help us to navigate through the application initially uh, but once we know what we have to do user they uh, i mean the home screen itself is pretty straightforward as it includes the various components like financials or workforce or capital budgeting uh, there are various components that you can do in workforce you can do uh, employer position level budgeting and capital you can do you know a capital asset level budgeting then you can also have the strategic finance so uh, home screen is pretty much uh, straightforward and also um, in this uh, panel it will uh, give you um, you know the updates on what is happening as in terms of what uh, tasks are due for that day what um, on what task are you lagging behind kind of thing so apart from that even if we also have the option of taking the help if we find uh, 
uh, if you want to investigate something, we can go in here uh, and online help is always available, which has all these videos, which can help you to, you know, understand your solution more and uh, help you to navigate better. Now, uh, as far as uh, the solution part is concerned, how budgeting takes place, let's uh, assume that I am a budgeting uh, or I'm a manufacturing company and I'm budgeting for my revenue. So this is the financial steps that I want to, uh, you know, uh, go in and I want to budget for my revenue. So being a manufacturing uh, unit, uh, my uh, source of budget is, you know, the sales of those units. So how I can drive those uh, that revenue is by uh, predicting what uh, the volume of sales is going to be and what the rate is going to be. So based on that, I can determine, okay, this is the expected revenue. Plus there can be other sources of revenue as well. So as soon as you uh, go into this uh, I can you see a lot of dashboards. So these dashboards are uh, the output of the budgeting that you have already carried out uh, like in here. So how we reach into that, these dashboards I will show it to you once we uh, you know see how uh, the task or how the budgeting takes place in uh, the solution. So uh, if you can see uh, on my screen uh, there is driver based revenue planning tab in here. I have the option of specifying these uh, drivers which are available. What is the expected volume of uh, units that uh, I will be selling in the budget year? What would be the average price discounts and all that thing? So all these drivers we can either manually enter or we also have the option of choosing a base for uh, entering. I mean, we do not have to literally enter any amount and whatever was uh, last year budgeted, I can use it as a base whatever trend is going on as per the current uh, you know sales of the current year you can take that as a base you can take uh, uh, you know average uh, plan average as a base you can take the current year forecast as a base so you have multiple options so it provides us flexibility uh, to you know for what if analysis as well as uh, you know uh, it doesn't uh, uh, require much time to have a look at the budgeted numbers in terms of the revenue so I can choose from all these options that I want my budget to be based on year on year increase monthly growth right so accordingly your driver will be calculated that way you can specify the increment value and you can get the calculated value over here in here you always have the option of changing uh, or, or writing any adjustment manually if you want if you're not happy with what the system has calculated versus in your average you can manually update it over here so it gives you the option of both um, uh, calculating your drivers or manually entering it and using the hybrid of those two as well now uh, other than that uh, I mean I once you have entered your driver and you have the driver based revenue you can view okay what revenue is calculated based on the driver that you've entered so in year total you have the product revenue and you have the various components of revenue which are calculated based on the driver that you have specified again if you write the adjustment they are will show over here so in a way the system is uh, providing you this uh, flexibility that uh, you can use um, the uh, the drivers uh, as per the discretion or if uh, in the first place you do not want to do the driver based budgeting you can directly uh, enter the value let's say I have a target value for uh, you know my revenue in by month or by quarter I can do that so I have we, we have that option available over here where we can specify okay uh, the target uh, numbers by month and if I want to enter at the quarter or year end level that is also acceptable because it will spread out all the target across the various months so we have that option both the option uh, and also uh, in here there are when you entering the value there are multiple options like uh, uh, when you on your right click just like you have in spreadsheet you have multiple options over here that you can write a comment so that would show uh, a specific flag against that number that what is uh, like your intention when you're entering that number and if you want any supporting details or any attachments like an additional details you are giving to uh, uh, the you know reviewer that that you want that uh, reviewer to look into these details you can specify over here also we have the option of change history in change history it will uh, literally allow me to see okay what was this number before what is it changed to so any change uh, made uh, in the system is tracked uh, so it uh, made uh, makes uh, the traceability and uh, you know the accountability uh, very 
e, uh, like it it makes accountability easy uh, so um, also for audit purpose let's say if, if you're um, you know submitting your budget let's say to the auditors they would be able to view it so you can fix an accountability in here uh, this is uh, the combination of um, you know the uh, driver based budgeting and the zero based budgeting or the hybrid of the two and you can view the results over here let's say total revenue what you've planned for so you have these uh, you know final version of your revenue that you have budgeted so uh, in this webcast, we are just looking into the revenue budget. So this is the numbers that you have budgeted. Also, uh, a very important feature that comes in very handy is like a drill through source. If you uh, want to see like how that number comes in, you can drill through the source of that number. So it allows the drillability. Uh, apart from that, there is uh, the option of, um, you know, what if analysis like uh, the management user they have already budgeted now they want to check what if my volume is changed by like five percent what if my rate is changed by one percent what if and you can add on other factors other driver also uh, very easily and you once you launch it you will get another version of your budget which uh, says uh, or which show you uh, what the numbers are going to be if those changes are made that you have opted for so this was uh, majorly related to the you know uh, the solution part how the core budgeting takes place how flexible it is whether to offer from driver or zero base or choose the hybrid of those two plus there are multiple version also you can you know once you have uh, uh, done with your budgeting you want to test another uh, assumptions or other set of data so you, what you can do is you can literally copy your uh, working version to draft version. You can make changes in the draft versions and you can go back and, uh, you know, uh, keep your working version intact so that you have that uh, variance to compare with how your budget would look like. So uh, same goes for expense, uh, balance sheet and cash flow thing. So this is what I wanted uh, to show you when it comes to uh, the core budgeting uh, part. So uh, after that, we also have the approval flow. Uh, let me show you how the approval flow works. Um, we have the approval flow in here, wherein once the budgeting team, central budgeting team starts, uh, as I said, the email notification um, uh, shoots out to all the stakeholders. And uh, it gives uh, the stakeholders uh, you know, uh, the option to log in. Uh, also, uh, once the you know user, the budget owner at the department level, approves, uh, oh, sorry, uh, he submits the budget, budgeted numbers. Even the reviewer have the option to review, um, you know, the budget numbers. They get an email notifications. So using this uh, approval uh, window, I can approve my budget to the high level. And let me show you how the path looks like. So let's say uh, the budgeting starts. The owner at zero, user one, who is the owner of the budget will start the budgeting so once he uh, promotes uh, the budget it will go to uh, uh, the uh, approver and then it will go to the next one and uh, next approver in line at the total entity level and finally at the central budgeting thing so this is uh, what your uh, you know the approval flow looks like this is how this is the path and you can keep a track of, of each and every user how much time that user is spending on a particular task or uh, uh, his efficiency efficiency can be driven based on that and we can set a standard okay this particular task should take this much time so you can be uh, set a standard and you can uh, you know uh, figure out or you can uh, obviously analyze how much time is taken so this is how the approval flow takes place whether it's top down budgeting or whether uh, it is uh, the bottom up uh, approach this is uh, what we have in terms of uh, other than that uh, you also have the option of uh, you know the out of office assistant so if let's say um, the user is not uh, in the uh, office is absent or he's on vacation you can, he can delegate it so based on a particular uh, delegation it the uh, the files that uh, he has submitted the budget that he has submitted automatically delegates to the next uh, you know approver like that so uh, again that can be done can be set up over here um after that uh, let's say the budget is submitted and it is approved the there are is our reports that we want to uh, view 
So let me uh, show you how the reports looks like because that's the most important part of budgeting. We are done with budgeting, but the budgeting, uh, the manager uh, wants to look into uh, the reports at the summarized level and they want to have that option of drill through. So let me take you to the report and show you how the report looks like or how can we make uh, uh, these reports. So these reports are uh, available in multiple, uh, you know, um, output as in like you can have the HTML output, you can have the PDF, XML, uh, XLS and whatnot. So uh, let me very quickly take you through the income statement, let's say. So over here, uh, you specify, uh, let's say, uh, what year that you are referring to and you can select the parameters and based on that you can view your report over here so these reports are very uh, dynamic uh, as in when you change uh, the entity let's say over here i change the entity it will automatically change uh, the numbers and it will automatically change the headings of the reports again uh, many of these reports are deliver you can drill through uh, the component let's say total revenue if i click on total revenue i can go to product revenue support revenue and things like that so i can drill through in this at this level also at the it's at the year total level so i have the option of drilling through the you know quarterly or monthly level and these are again as i said uh, refreshable reports as and when uh, their the budgeting cycle or their new updates or data pulled in from you know your source systems these reports are updated updated with the fresh numbers so this is one of the report i mean we can have a look at uh, the other let's say a uh, cash flow statement which is uh, another set of report so we can create uh, these reports uh, on the following ground I, like cash flow from operating uh, activities or from investing activities and financing activities here again these are at the total level we will have the option or we can have the option of drilling down to the source like where that number is coming from so uh, once we looked into the reports let me take you back to the uh, revenue tab where we have uh, uh, you know our dashboards so dashboards are pretty interesting part of uh, the budgeting solution because uh, they are quite interactive they are uh, very uh, easily configurable if you see over here so i have uh, all these dashboard dashboards which are quite interactive at the same time because let's say uh, i'm looking at the revenue summary now the revenue summary are at the total uh, level so if i want to drill through i can uh, drill through the specific account level uh, if I want to so these are quite uh, interest interesting dashboards and as I said these are easily uh, configurable so whatever KPIs uh, based uh, you think that works for big obviously I've uh, uh, in my example I've taken the manufacturing industry as in um, for this webcast we can use uh, you know a multiple industry examples over here and show you the KPIs uh, that can be uh, easily configured and those are refreshable and the important part one of the important part over here is that There are other components like workforce capital. So those components can be brought in over here. We can create a, a, a Set of dashboards with a mix of financials and capex Let's say in order to achieve a revenue target how much uh, workforce we need and all those things so we can have uh, those sort of dashboards available as well which are the mix of various components so if time permits i will show you those in one of our uh, clients if possible so similar to that uh, i ha we have another uh, set of dashboards over here which uh, are uh, under analysis so if you see there are operating expenses which compares your actual versus plan so actually you pulled in from your source systems and how your plan looks like what is the difference between the two you can also uh, pull in the components of your balance sheet like what do you expect in terms of your current uh, assets going forward uh, again cost of sole sales which are at the year total level and these are driven by the drivers that we specified so uh, in the first window where we are specifying drivers we also had the various components as in like what is the material cost what is the labor cost for a particular set of unit and based on that it calculates the cost of sales 
um, in here we can have uh, uh, the dashboards of this sort where we uh, select which component that you want to view let's say I want to view total revenue uh, or let's say cost of sales I can select it and it will automatically uh, update the numbers and the trend based on that so we have uh, all these interactive dashboards uh, where you have this options when you have drill through uh, options available and then we have like the cash flow it uh, you know captures your monthly cash inflows and outflows and based on that it gives you uh, the trend of how cash is flowing in from sources what are the various sources of cash and how you're using it and whatnot so uh, these are uh, the sort of dashboards that are available with us um, other than that we also have uh, like something called infolet so let me very quickly show you in one of uh, are uh, you know clients where we have used uh, these infolets so how these infolets work these are uh, even at the higher level uh, at, at the summary level uh, dashboards and uh, we can uh, view these data as you can see these are cards where you have the financial performance over we at very high level and if you want to drill down you can do that as well and just like I said overview if I want to flip it I can have an overview and uh, the best part of this is these are easy configurable that is one uh, they uh, you know can be uh, they refresh on real time as in when data uh, you know is updated these numbers are updated these graphs are updated and the best part is they can have can you can set these up uh, on your you know local devices whether you have iPad or tablets or you know your smartphones as and when on the go you can view all these uh, infolets and dashboards and based on that and because uh, generally it happens that management do not have literally time to configure their dashboards and you know get a system and look into it so you can have it on your personal devices as well and you can as i said drill through all the details that you want and have any sort of kpis which works best for you So these are uh, the type of dashboards or uh, the output is which is avail available which uh, uh, people or the management really like or appreciate about the solution. Uh, now um, one more thing is uh, that we are kind of if you think that we are taking away uh, Excel from you that is certainly not the case. So uh, we have something called smart view which uh, is a really interesting feature. It's uh, kind of an add-on in your uh, Excel. So let me very quickly show you, okay, if you're very familiar with Excel, you are very comfortable with Excel, um, and you literally you know, keep using it. So we certainly have that option as an add-on. So let me show you how that works. So here, this is my Excel. So if you can see on your, uh, no, there is a smart view tab so this tab helps me to connect with the system when I say system that is the planning and budgeting solution so you are literally in Excel and through uh, this panel you can literally connect with the database that we have so let me show you how it works so now I connect with uh, the shared uh, uh, connection that I have already specified. Now I can just log in, just like I log in uh, the application, I can log in to uh, Smart View as well. Well, we're waiting for Ramar to log in. I'll remind everyone we are taking questions on, on the question toolbar on your icon. We have had a few questions come in, so we'll be taking those. Um, we'll answer as they come in, but we'll also circle back so we can share the, the questions from, to the greater audience. Again, that's the question icon on your toolbar. Mm, let me ready. Just give me a moment. Uh, 
Okay, let me uh, open a, a file in here. Like, let me show you how it's done in here. Now I have this particular form available with me. I certainly have uh, option, if you see in the action menu, I can go in and open this form in Smart View. So I've logged into the system. I have opened it in Smart View. Now I can uh, easily uh, access the Smart View over here. So let me show you one of the uh, already private connection, let's say. Mm. There you go. So now uh, my smart view, uh, my Excel is literally uh, connected with uh, the database that I use for uh, my application. So now, uh, as you can see on the right, I have this panel which allows me to view the various component of uh, uh, you know the application that I'm connected to, like task list. I have the option of uh, task list. I can go to specific form. Let's say if you want to go to a specific form, you can uh, do that over here. Mm, let me uh, select a form for you. So this is the form. So this is the form which exists in my, uh, you know, uh, application and I can double click over here and open that form over here. So this allows you to access uh, your application which is there in the system using the smart view. So in a way, uh, you are using uh, the Excel, you are using all the features of uh, Excel at the same time, you are working on the, uh, the application, the solution that we are offering. So uh, it gives your Excel uh, more uh, security since I have to, again, uh, log in to the uh, application or to the smart view in order to view the database and what the values exist in my database. And at the same time, I, uh, it gives you the more, uh, it gives uh, your Excel more power so that it can utilize as in like, slice and dice you can all create your ad hoc grid like ad hoc analysis it give, allows you to your option to select your own grid over here like you can select the combination you can slice and dice you can take anything uh, over there and create your own template kind of thing which allows you you know uh, for which allows better analysis in a way because your uh, system uh, your uh, smart view or your Excel is connected with the database of the uh, planning and budgeting solution. And uh, it is using on real time, it is pulling in data from that solution and you are using Excel, you are analyzing all those uh, uh, you know, numbers and you can, uh, the best part is you can save this uh, you know, template, the template that you create based on ad hoc analysis. You can save it over here. And next time, whenever you ex open Excel and and you connect with the system using smart view already the numbers are again will be refreshed so you will have the updated numbers again so this is how it allows you to again it makes your excel really secured and really powerful and you uh, do not feel like you are working in a new system you still feel like uh, you uh, that's something that you are familiar with in a way so this is how uh, our um, excel or the smart view component works and uh, this is again something that users really appreciate, users really like. And uh, other than that, just like you want to uh, copy certain numbers in these cells from other Excel, you can literally copy, paste, you can have all those functionality that you have uh, for Excel and you know use this because literally you're working in Excel. And you can uh, submit the data from here if you want uh, to uh, you know 
make some changes into the application if and if, and you do it using the smart view you can submit the data over here you can run the calculations uh, over here so it allows you uh, all those option to you know uh, make changes also if you want to submit the data you can do that over here using all these options so you um, this again uh, you know it's uh, an add-on which is really liked by uh, most of the users so this is what i had for you i mean obviously there are many other things that i want to show you but again because of the time limitations we cannot uh, uh, go into those details but uh, yeah i mean this is uh, how the budgeting solution looks like which is very uh, flexible very easy flexible in terms of the approaches uh, easy in terms of you know the data integration the data pull in or easily configurable reports or dashboards and where which are like very interact uh, interactive so you can um, certainly look to you know opt for these uh, this solution rather than doing the old-fashioned uh, spreadsheet budgeting so uh, this is what I had and uh, I will uh, ask Bonnie to take you through the next uh, few slides Bonnie uh, over to you Thank you, Umar. And uh, while we're wrapping up and talking about the key things we covered today, we just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. What you heard today with the Oracle APM solution is that your budgeting timelines and amount of time that you put into planning and budgeting can be significantly reduced outside of using a spreadsheet. Also, the, the product comes with predefined budgeting models, so you can leverage those, and it gets you even quicker to where you want to go in your, your budgeting cycle. So you also have several different modules, and I, I'll go over those in your next slide, but it, it all comes with one single purchase of a license. And what we also showed you today was the real-time reporting, including narrative reports as well. So. Um, We'll, we'll go through the whole modules in a moment. What you should know, because often what we get from clients considering a purchase of the APM solution is, well, this is great, but how long is it going to take me to implement? We can actually literally have you up and running on this solution in six weeks. And as, as Umar showed you, the user adoption is generally pretty favorably um, favorable within organizations just because it is very spreadsheet-like and, and it can connect with SmartView and that helps your users adopt this technology. So when we talk about the planning and budgeting solutions, our Oracle EPM Cloud, you actually get um, multiple uh, tools within the software. One for your financials, you could actually use the workforce planning module, you could use the capital model uh, as well as projects. Um, so those are all things that would, you'd have access to. You don't have to implement all of those. You can do one and two, uh, you know, or whatever one you, that you feel is most pertinent to your organization and grow into the others. So with that, I want to thank you. We're going to go over some of the questions. Um, oh, let me talk a little bit about Evosis. You're probably wondering who we are. We are Evosis Global. We have over a thousand cloud customers across the globe, um, and we specialize in all seven Oracle pillars. So that includes this module as well as our ERP modules from Oracle, HCM modules, um, and we, we run all of those. We implement all Oracle products at, to date. We are located across 30 countries. Obviously, the U.S. is one. And we have over 1,200 consultants that work for us. And we have been in the Oracle space for over 12 years. So we, we feel pretty pretty good that we're experts. And you can see Oracle recognized us as experts as well. And I'd like to point out the awards because it is something that we're very proud of. We don't win awards just here in North America, but across the world for, for developing solutions and working hand in hand with Oracle on their platform. So with that, let's talk a little bit about, there are some questions coming in. We, we still have time to take additional questions. So if you have a question, please use your question icon on the toolbar. Um, but some of the questions we want to make sure everyone's aware of. Um, someone wrote in, so the charts and um, the charts and tables can they be customized? So all of those charts and tables are customizable. Um, but we're happy to work with you and take you know questions if you have a, if you want a deeper dive. We're happy to show that to you as well. 
And also, someone was also asking about how flexible the dashboards are. So the dashboards are completely configurable. The users can configure them on their own. They are drag and drop. And what are the questions here, Umar? Um, oh, can you do driver-based revenue budgeting at higher levels than on, on a product? And that is um, true. You can do that as well. And I don't know if we want to go into um, a little bit more detail on that or not. But because this product is completely configurable, it is configured upon your organizational needs. Um, and Umar, perhaps we have a question here on integration. Is, it, is there any system that this tool cannot integrate with? Uh, not really. Uh, whatever source systems that you are using, uh, whether they are ERP or you have, uh, as long as you have data in warehouses, even the spreadsheet, because uh, those are the three possible options uh, that we can have. Uh, how or you are maintaining your, uh, you know, budget or actual data. So we can uh, easily configure uh, integration with all these three uh, sources. Uh, the best part is the EPM Automate tool, the, which are specific to, uh, you know, Avosys that we recommend is, which. Uh, keep complete track of uh, how your data is loading. It automates, automates your data load and you can schedule your data load uh, any number, you know, uh, on a specific day, as I mentioned, of the month or quarter. And the best part is even if you're automating it, it doesn't, you know, restrict your option of manually loading data. So you can still manually load data n number of times. And every time you do it, uh, ref, ref, uh, new data or fresh data comes in. Well, that's excellent. Thank you, Umar. Um, so what I would offer, if you did have any questions that we, we have one more, actually, I'm sorry. Are complex Excel-based actuary calculations supported for financial sector? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat that? Yeah, are complex Excel-based actual, actual calculations supported for financial sector? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, the calculations as used uh, over here, they can be uh, configured as well. Just like I showed you uh, the various options where you can select from as in like driver, uh, how you want to, uh, you know, uh, allocate your driver across the budget year. So if you have certain calculations which are, you know, your Excel page which are specific to you, those can be configured as well. And even in uh, whether it's a financial sector or any other sector, uh, that can be like banking or, or I mean, I just took the example of manufacturing, but all those uh, drivers and all those calculations are available for you to configure. I would venture a guess at this point that we've actually implemented this tool across every major industry around the globe. I, this is one of the more flexible tools that, that we work with, and we have very, very satisfied customers on this platform. What I would like to offer everyone here um, is if you did have questions that we didn't get to today, please reach out to us directly. We're happy to take your questions and even go ahead and walk you through a, a individual demo and base it on your business. It's something that we do really well and we'd be happy to show you how this tool could work for you and help you solve your, your business problems. My contact information is up there on the screen, so please feel free to reach out. And with that, I think we'll wrap it up. And I want to thank you all for attending today. We appreciate your time and attention, and we look forward to hearing from you. Umar, thanks for your time today. You did a great job on the demo. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon.